Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to the very first tutorial on C programming and stuff in the real world. Yeah, that's right, in the real world. I am Nikhil, and why did I make these tutorials? To let you know about the practical usage of C programming, to explain concepts using programs instead of books and boring theories or uh, topics. I'm going to be showing you programs and uh, running it so you guys understand it more better. Uh, and also to answer your question, where would I ever use this stuff? So you will learn something, you will know something, but you do not know the practical application of it. You don't know where it is used. And also I'm going to be going over a few uh, questions they ask in the interview, which you might find it very useful. I will also go over the real world examples. So whatever examples I'm going to be showing, it, it is pretty uh, useful examples. And this is not a C programming tutorial. That is what I'll do. Like, oh, let me start with C program. And maybe if you find this useful, I'll move on to data structures and object oriented programming and maybe operating systems. Uh, I'll go on the programming questions and some questions which they ask in the interview, some puzzles also to help you understand even more. All this I'm going to be doing in uh, Unix. And this, this is going to be done using GCC compiler. There are a lot of compilers, but this is, uh, this is one of the best. And it is, it is going to be useful. It will definitely help you guys to use GCC as a, and Unix because you will be doing it hands-on. So you won't be using it using any GUI or anything like that. So you will be giving the command. And, and it, is, it is a pretty, pretty useful uh, compiler. Go on the content, there are around 20 topics which I'm going to be covering, and hopefully, uh, it will be done in 20 tutorials, maybe maybe more uh, if, uh, if required. Before we start, let me just show you guys how you can install a Linux machine inside a Windows machine. I understand that most of you will be having a Windows machine, and if you are if you are interested in installing GCC. Inside your Linux, then you should obviously have a Linux machine. So you can use this software, uh, which is called as a virtual box, which allows you to create virtual software, virtual operating system inside it. And for that, you need to download this uh, virtual box. It is free. You can, uh, you can Google it and you can download it. You need to also download your uh, virtual video file. So I have I have CentOS, which is a Red Hat version. If you are interested in, if you want to download Ubuntu. Then you need to download Ubuntu.vdi file, which is again which is available, and you can download it. And you need to follow the steps. You can you can type in Google installing Ubuntu inside virtual uh, virtual box, and you will find a numerous steps on how to do it. And they, they would have shown it with a snapshot. Let us start off with a with a hello world program. So the hello world, I'm going to be opening an editor. And I'm going to be naming the file as hello world.c. And this file, this program is going to be outputting hello world on, on the standard output, which is which is the monitor. So for that, you need to you need a main function where all the magic starts, and you need a printf statement, which which prints into the standard output. So it takes the first argument is a string. So I'm going to be displaying hello. And a new line. Let me just comment as to what we are doing. Hello, world. So we have a printf statement, which is a function which takes takes it input and prints it into the standard output. So if you if you compile this, if you compile this program. Now, using the GCC, then you see an error. So this is because it doesn't know the declaration of printf. It doesn't know the format of what printf takes. Whether, whether the first argument is a string, is, a, is it an integer, how does, how does the compiler know? So you need to, you need to tell the compiler what, what printf statement takes. So let us include a, include a file. A header, this is called as a header file, which basically contains the various declarations of standard input output. So, printf, since it is an output in a input output function, uh, it is present in this file called as stdio.h. Also, let me just have a macro. 
called as world which is equivalent to my world so this world if you write if you use this world in, in your program that it is replaced by my world so let me replace world So the world, this world will be replaced with my world. This is called as a macro. And you compile the program now. Don't get any output. So this this is a command. This this invokes a genome C compiler and it takes a dot C as an input. So what does it output? So the output of output of uh, hello world dot C is a dot out. So it doesn't matter what what the file name is. The executable it generates is eight out of. Executable is something which which the compiler, which the computer can execute. So if you run this on your command line, then you will see hello my world. So your next question should be like what what happened when I gave GCC? How how did it generate eight out of? What are the intermediate steps that happened? So in order to know that what GCC did, let us say whatever it did. Okay, first, first let us remove the error out of five, and let us see what what GCC did. Let us save it in temporary file and give hello world dot hello world dot c. And I don't want the output to be error out of. I want it to be hello world dot exe. Just so you know that it's an executable. So if you run this, and when we do run this, you see the three intermediate files are created: hello world dot i dot o and dot s. So what happened? What are the what is the journey of a C program to an executable? What are the steps which have which should takes place? There are four intermediate steps which happen before you actually get an executable. The first one is called as pre-processing. The second one is compilation. The third one is assembly, and fourth one is linking. So the hello world dot c is handed over to a preprocessor, which generates hello world dot i, which is then fed into a compiler, which generates hello world dot s, which is a language which the assembler understands, and it is sent to the sent to the assembler, which generates an hello which generates hello world dot o. This hello world dot o is Finally, then send to a linker where you get an executable. So that is clear. So if you want to see what is inside the file, let us let us start let us start step by step. So we'll see what pre-processing does. So the pre-processing it does three main things. One is the macro substitution. Second one is comments are removed, and third one is expansion of expansion of Included files, which is how history I got. Right. So we will see whether whether all these three things are done. So we will open hello world dot i. Let me open it. And you see the comment is not present. I had a comment saying printer. Or better yet, let me show you the hello world dot. So this is hello world dot c, and this is hello world dot i. So hello world dot c has a comment saying print printing hello world, but if you see here the comment is removed, so preprocessor has removed the comment. Then it has replaced world, it has replaced replaced world with my world. Here it is, and finally the entire thing. So you see around 900 900 lines. That is stdio dot h expanded. So it gets this file, it copies the contents of stdio.h and paste it into hello world.i. And if you want to see the declaration of printf, these are all various printf statements. We just but yeah, this is the one. So this is the format. This is what printf statement takes. 
So it, the first argument is a character. Then you have variable arguments. So extern indicates that the declaration is present in the file, but definition I don't know, but it's not definitely not in my file. That is what extern extern tells the compiler. So you have the declaration here, and the preprocessor generates the file. So now this hello world, now hello world dot i is sent to a compiler. Take a look at this file. So it's a bunch of instructions which the assembler will understand. So this is finally the compiler then compiles the preprocessing preprocessed code and generates an assembly level code which the assembler understands. So the assembler then converts the assembly level instruction into binary instruction which the computer understands. That is that is hello world dot o. You can take a look at it, but you will not make any sense of it. So you have few simple tables. I will explain that later. You also have something called as ELF, which is a format. It, it means executable and linkable format. And you have this ELF format, which which the linker understands. Which so this this code is meant for linker. So it will it will ask the linker to get. So until this stage, the printf what printf definition or printf does is not known. Once the linker is linker's job is to get the definition from a library, and it displays it, and it puts it into the code. So if you see the size of the hello world dot o, it is 5087. And now if you see the size of the executor of the hello world, hello world dot exe, compiler has the linker has added in few of his own code. This is the final stage in which all the linking of function calls with the definition are done. So since in this stage the GCC has no clue about uh, functions like printf. Until the compiler knows exactly where all these functions are implemented, it just uses a placeholder for function call. And uh, at this stage the printf is resolved and the actual address of the function is plugged into the file. So the user does this task. It also combines some extra code of, of program that is required when the program starts and and when the program ends. So, for example, there is a code which the standard which is standard for setting up running environment by passing command line arguments and passing environment variables and other things. So, similarly, some of the standard code is required to run to return the return value to the program, return value of the program back to the system. So, the, all these tasks, linker is a very huge topic which which I might. Which I which I have picked it up in further in the course, but but now we need to understand that it gets the function definitions and puts it into the executable. So the executable will contain printf statement. So now if you run hello world or exe, you will get hello my world. I hope everything is clear. So in this in this class, you learnt about what are the steps. What is the journey of a C program to generate an executable? What does there are four steps: preprocessor, compilation, assembly, and linking. I in 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 I showed you the files, intermediate files. What happens when you actually give GCC hello world? All these steps, whatever I explain, happens, and finally you magically get an executable, which you can run it and see what the output. This step is same throughout for every C program. And and this is a very they usually ask this question and explain the uh, explain the step steps uh, and getting you know, getting what are the intermediate steps so yeah compilation again is a big subject so you have you have a lexical analysis and various things in between but on a higher level this is all you need to know this is this is a good starting point for you guys to understand what a program what program does so hope you guys understood hope you guys like the tutorial and don't forget to subscribe.